Couple days ago, the latest entry in the God of War series, God of War Ragnarok, finally dropped. Very anticipated game. Some have said that God of War 4 on the PS4 is like the best PS4 game. And it's definitely in the top 10. You can't deny that. I played a little bit of it, didn't finish it. But today what I want to talk about is I want to go back to the beginning. I want to talk about God of War PS2. Now, if you are a follower of mine on my Twitch my Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash bigdgeekdom101. Uh, the, li the link for that is down below. When I go on Twitch, I do a couple things. I play video games on there, just chill, you know, relax. Um, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Or I watch episodes of Dragon Ball in, like, pristine video quality. Because, you know, my main channel, I cover Dragon Ball. Um, so we watch it on there and we discuss it. You know, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So, um, but I recently, a couple months ago in September, played God of War. And the goal was to play God of War, God of War 2, all the PSP ones, God of War 3, and then eventually 4, and then Ragnarok. But I didn't get a chance to do it before it came out because there's a lot of stuff I have on my plate. And you know how it is. But I do plan on playing Ragnarok. But I want to go back to God of War 1. Now, I bought God of War 1 on PS2 way back when it first came out. Because I liked the way the game looked. And I'm a big fan of... Uh, and I read up it was a good game. I'm a big fan of Greek mythology. Since like 7th grade, y'all, I have loved Greek mythology. I love the Odyssey, the Iliad, the story of Medusa, like Zeus, Kronos, Atlas. All of these like gods and conflict with each other. You know, I was always so big into Greek mythology. Some of my favorite stories have come out of that. And a lot of the stories in Greek mythology definitely teach life lessons for us, you know. Um, so going into, you know, God of War, when I first bought it, I loved it. I loved the game, but it was so long ago that I had kind of forgotten about it. So that's why I wanted to go back and play it again. So on Twitch recently, I did play the game again. And while I did still love it, there are some issues with the game. First of all, I want to get this out of the way. Let's talk about the good. Storyline is incredible. Love the storyline. You know, the, the feud between uh, Kratos and Ares is amazing. I love the way the graphics are for a PS2 game. It's a beautiful, gorgeous-looking game. I love the sort of the, the adventure of like a kind of a 3D beat-em-up, and you have different weapons and spells that you unlock as you go along. You can do all kinds of cool stuff like fire lightning bolts or uh, turn somebody into stone. Lots of cool stuff. There are lightning all around you. Uh, the boss fights are epic. They have these like quick time moments where you wear the boss down and then they attack you and then you push the button. Many of you guys know what I'm talking about because I'm, I'm assuming the vast majority of you guys have played a God of War game. But playing it back this time, you know, as an adult, I played it on normal. I think when I was younger, I played it on easy. I don't remember the game being this frustrating. There are some parts of the game that are frustrating. Now, I do love how this game is basically sort of like a 3D beat-em-up, but also it serves like a Tomb Raider type of dungeon crawler. There's not that many, like, actual, quote, dungeons that are underground or whatever, but there's tons of castles and caves and locations, and you have to find secrets, and you, know, you, have, you have chests that give you red orbs and, and, and different things, and you use the red orbs to unlock higher powers to upgrade your your powers and your weapons. You know, I love games like that. You know, you got a combination of, of various genres in God of War. One of the things that annoyed the crap out of me this last playthrough is there are some boss fights, yo, that annoy me. I usually love the boss fights. I think the boss fights in God of War games are epic, awesome. Leviathan, you know, the sisters, they're fun. Bro, that, and if you were on Twitch, man, you saw this. That fight that I had where you fight Cerberus and it keeps breeding little ones, that fight was a mess, yo. Like, I was able to beat it, but it was so unfair. Like, they do things. Like, when you play this game, you can tell, like, that even though the game is a good game, I am in no way going to sit here and say the game is bad. There are a lot of problems with it, and you can tell that it was sort of their first attempt at making a game like this. I also played God of War 2, which I will do a review on soon uh, here on the channel and tell you all about it. And God of War 2 really did fix a lot of God of, War, God of War 1's problems because I think God of War 1, like I mentioned, they weren't getting everything right. You know, uh, it was their first kind of uh, go through. But the controls are smooth. The enemies are cool looking. There's so many different kinds of monsters and each one triggers a different quick time event and a different strategy to beat. Sometimes you get like surrounded and you have to figure out how to get out of it. 
Um, and when you play the game, you sort of do different things because as you play through, you may choose to play through the game again with a different weapon, uh, the sword or whatever, or maybe use the spells differently. So it does have some replayability, but um, some of these boss fights were extremely annoying. There's also a couple of dungeons uh, where it has that game mechanic that I think one of the one of the games that really does this a lot is Super Ghouls and Ghosts. All the Ghosts and Goblins games. And that is, as you are moving through the game, something happens and you get killed. Like, you just die. And it happens so fast that you don't have time to react to it. So you have to save frequently because you may go into an area and then some enemy or some spikes might come out of the wall and just kill you and you're dead. Because you don't know that you're supposed to go somewhere else and flick a switch to take that away. You know what I mean? Like, there's stuff like that in the game. And uh, so it's one of those games where you die and you learn from it. Like Mega Man, uh, some of the Mega Man games have that. Um, you know, I mentioned Ghouls and Ghosts being a big, big proponent of this. And while me being an old school gamer, I get it. It is kind of frustrating because, first of all, sometimes it's funny. Like, there are times in that stream where I like went to a new area, got killed. I was like, what the hell just happened? Like It just comes out of nowhere. But that's because I have a sense of humor about it. You know, you can't take yourself too seriously, but man, it gets frustrating. And it is a frustrating mechanic because even if you say frequently, sometimes you'll have this happen to you where you'll get killed not knowing what to do. And the game's cryptic at times. And because of that... You have to figure it out, and that may require you dying, but sometimes going back to your checkpoint where you saved is not right where you died, so you may have to go back to the same part of the game again. There was one part of the game that really frustrated me near the end where, and if you play the game, you know what I'm talking about. You're in this room where the floors are moving, and there's multiple enemies coming from different directions. You've got guys shooting arrows from the back of the room. You've got um, these sort of flying bat things coming at you. And if you stand on the platforms that where the floor is not moving, there's a flamethrower in the wall that just torches you and you die. You just straight up die. And again, you would not even notice that flamethrower. The game does not give you a hint on this. At least I didn't see it. You will not notice that flamethrower your first time through. And when I played the game recently, I hadn't played it in like 12 years or 13 years. It's been a while. And so um, I forgot a lot of the things. You know, and so I got killed there. And then, you know, I died a bunch in that part because my health wasn't at the highest. And, uh, you know, I was. it was hard. Like, it was challenging you know i can only imagine what that game must be like playing it on hard luckily though god of war 2 fixed a lot of the issues but as far as i can remember god of war 1 was originally intended to be just a solo story like you know the story of kratos and sort of his issues with the god of war Ares. and you see him i, I just love the vistas in the game like early in the game when you go to the city you see Ares, giant ass Ares, like stepping on people, and you can't do anything. He's in the background. But I love how there's like that subtle foreshadowing, like, okay, you're gonna have to fight this dude. What made it funny though is Ares in God of War 1 looks like freaking Ganondorf. You can't even tell me that dude don't look like Ganon. Talking about the uh the, the human Ganon. You cannot even freaking tell me otherwise. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, either way, though, it's just an observation that I made. The music in the game is awesome. Uh, what I was going to actually do for you guys is I was going to upload the VODs here on World of Geekdom, but there's, like, there's nudity in the game. Not too much, but there's some nudity, and there's a sex scene in the game. So, I, I don't know how YouTube's going to react to that, but thankfully on Twitch, when I played it, I had no issues. Uh, make sure you follow me on Twitch, though, trust me. But, uh... Man, um, I would have shown y'all, like, I think I'd beat it in, like, four tries, maybe, I think it was four parts, uh, four different days. I took my time with it. I wasn't going to rush through. It's about nine hours, maybe nine, ten hours, roughly, maybe a little bit more. But, um, yeah, the uh, the sex scene, it was hilarious because you, you, if you do it right, it's a quick time event where if you do it right, you get red orbs, and that's awesome. 
you know, you do have to use your brain in the game, too. And I always like games like this, you know, but I feel like God of War 1 was not that well polished compared to the sequels, especially like God of War 2 and God of War Ragnarok. I really enjoyed God of War 2, but I will give you my thoughts on that much more extensively when I drop that review. Probably this weekend is the plan, but I also got to drop my Black Panther review tonight. So tonight on the channel, subscribe if you're new, you're getting the Black Panther review and you are going to get the non-spoiler. The spoiler review for Black Panther is probably going to be tomorrow, and then probably God of War 2 right after that. So, tons of content coming here. And also, I think I may do a video on the DC moves, because now there's rumors of like Justice League 2, Man of Steel 2 with Chris Nolan involved. DC is starting to crank it up, man. And I'm curious about what James Gunn and those guys are, are up to, because it sounds like they have a direction and a plan. Take care, y'all. Really, I'll see y'all tonight for Black Panther.